What's up, guys? Welcome back. Now, we're going to be talking about giving your Switch more power, giving it more power right now. You have the ability to give your Nintendo Switch a power booster without having to buy a new system or upgrade the console. You can do it yourself. However, I got to add a disclaimer to this. I do not recommend you do this on your own Nintendo Switch itself. Perhaps you could do this on a secondary Nintendo Switch, but I don't recommend doing this if you're going to try this out on your one and only Nintendo Switch because this could brick your system if you're not careful and if you don't pay attention to how this works. But with that out of the way, if you're looking to get some more performance out of your Switch or a secondary Switch, this Switch software mod will actually do that for you and you don't have to add any type of hardware modifications to the system. You can actually overclock the Nintendo Switch CPU and GPU to much greater levels than what the Switch is currently clocked at from factory settings. So this comes by way of the hacking scene at gbatemp.net. This program is called Freebird Switch Clock Speed Control System Module. And I'm gonna put this on the screen here. Basically this program allows you to adjust the clock speeds however you want, increase them or even decrease them on the GPU and CPU. And they even put a warning on there that GPU clock speeds above 768 megahertz may cause damage to your switch. So there's a warning that they say right there, along with CPU overclocking can cause stability issues. However, things have been tested already by various different people, and they do have some settings that they suggest that don't cause any damage really that they've seen yet to the Nintendo Switch. And just to be clear, the stock settings on the Switch CPU is one gigahertz and the stock settings of the GPU is 768 megahertz and that rounds out to be about 400 gigaflops docked of computing performance and of course while undocked the CPU remains at one gigahertz and the GPU is down clocked to 307 megahertz which has been estimated to be close to 200 gigaflops of computing performance at that point point. and that's where you see where the battery life comes in and of course the downgraded visuals as well in portable mode because the comp performance is half of what it is in docked mode. But like I said, after some testing, some of the users have found some stabilized clock speeds that you can use on your Nintendo Switch with this hack. That is 460 megahertz on the GPU in handheld mode and 840 megahertz in docked mode for the Nintendo Switch GPU. They don't suggest adjusting any of the CPU settings at this time before they test more, since currently they are mainly testing just the GPU performance and right now that is the stable clock speed that they have managed to get without any errors or stability issues on the Switch GPU and handheld and dock mode. Now doing some calculations, that is around a 10 to 15% increase in performance. I think it does benefit handheld mode a lot better because they said that their 460 megahertz didn't make that much of an impact on the battery life, but it did improve performance quite a bit in certain games from that 307 megahertz to 460 megahertz that's quite a bit of a difference. From 768 to 840, that's less of a difference, but on certain games, maybe like Doom, for example, maybe it would run a little bit more smooth in more intense scenes. I'm not exactly sure how they program that game, however, as far as resolution is concerned, if it has anything to do with the frame rate collapsing and then the resolution automatically dropping, or if the resolution is only capped in certain areas. It's hard to say if that actually will improve resolution or not by keeping frame rate higher in games like Doom, since obviously we didn't develop the game or program it, it's hard to say, but it would improve performance on the frame rate level at the very least, and that looks like to be the case here. Now another thing to note about the Tegra X1 processor is that the CPU and the GPU stock level chip from Nvidia on the Nvidia Shield TV is clocked at 2 gigahertz for the CPU and 1 gigahertz on the GPU. So technically that is the exact same chip that is being used in the Nintendo Switch. So what you could theoretically do is you could push this GPU all the way up to 1 gigahertz and you could get the full potential of this processor. Quite possibly if you're a tech guy and you like to take apart systems, you know, Spawnwave, for example, he likes to do that. But this would be an interesting kind of like project to work on to test out on a practice, quote unquote practice Nintendo Switch, maybe not your main Switch. Maybe, just maybe, you could take apart the Nintendo Switch, take out the actual board of the console and put your own cooling on it on the outside and fully test the capabilities of this by overclocking it to the full one gigahertz and getting the full range of the GPU, which would be 
over 500 gigaflops. Remember when the Tegra X1 was first announced, Nvidia said this was the most powerful mobile processor ever made. In fact, they said this was a one teraflops FP16 mobile processor, but you know, an FP32, which is how we judge games by the console standards, PlayStation 4 is 1.8 teraflops, Xbox One is 1.3 teraflops, Nintendo Switch is 400 gigaflops. So in those terms, at the full clock speed level, the Tegra X1 would be just over 500 gigaflops of performance. So that'd be a fun little project for someone to do to test out because they could theoretically get the Nintendo Switch running at one gigahertz on the GPU level, getting that 500 gigaflops of performance, and then you will see a full 25% increase of performance while docked on the Nintendo Switch, Doom and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with their performance, especially in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, there was a lot of frame rate hiccups in that game. I think adding 25% more performance of the hardware would actually smooth out that game quite a bit and perhaps get it more to a locked 30 frames per second at the very least without changing any of the graphic settings or resolution settings, just the performance level. 25% is quite a bit for a game like that. That would really help a lot. But like I said, that's all theoretical. I think someone would have to take apart the Switch and have the actual board with a fan or some type of external cooling system on it to make sure the system didn't overheat because of the extreme overclocking that you're doing to it. But it is really crazy that the hackers have now enabled all these features on the Nintendo Switch, including overclocking. So basically what the Nintendo Switch is right now, as it stands, is a dev kit that you, the fan, have access to with certain hacking tools that these people have provided for you online. And what's interesting about this hack is that it has nothing to do with, you know, pirating games or putting ROMs on the system or anything like that. This is simply system functionality that you can hack and try for yourself to give the system a little bit better performance if you want it, or even greater performance than that if you really are crazy about it and get deeper into it. You can actually improve the performance of your Switch and improve the frame rate of these games if you really are interested in doing that. And this goes with what the hackers have already included with the Switch and what they've done to it with system themes, save backups locally, all things that Nintendo themselves has not done and the hackers have done. So this is very interesting. Again, like I said at the beginning, I don't suggest trying this on your main Nintendo Switch, but if you're into this kind of thing and you have a secondary Switch to try out these things with, this might be something that could be a fun little project to try on the side so anyways guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section if you did enjoy this video hit the like button and subscribe for more and i'll talk to you very soon in the next video have a great day